In this video, we're going to talk about foreign investment. So foreign investment is a really important concept to learn and it is essential for Australia's economy because as you would know, we have been dependent on foreign investment in order to fund the mining investment boom. Uh, in terms of understanding the concepts, it might seem like a fairly complex um, a bunch of ideas to understand, but if we walk through it uh, step by step, then hopefully you'll all be able to understand foreign investment quite well. So these are the curriculum links which are relevant for this video. If you want to look at them in more detail, feel free to pause the video and read them. But for now, we'll move on. So the two key concepts we'll first cover are foreign liabilities and foreign assets. So what are foreign liabilities? Uh, foreign liabilities are created when Australian residents borrow money from overseas or sell assets. So some examples of how foreign liabilities may be created uh, could be if uh, a Japanese non-resident were to lend money to an Australian mining firm, this exchange would build up Australia's foreign liabilities. Another example would be if a US investor uh, were to buy shares in an Australian company. So that is an example of Australian shares being sold um, and therefore this would also result in an increase in foreign liabilities. The common theme that you can take away from those two examples are that both examples are cases of foreign investment flowing into Australia. So you can abbreviate that as FIA or foreign investment into Australia. Uh, and they generally represent an inflow of money into the country. So I guess in summary, foreign liabilities are created when there is an inflow of money into Australia um, and that is often in the form of foreign investment. So onto foreign assets. So when are foreign assets created? So these assets are created when Australians lend money to foreign residents or they purchase assets. So for example, if an Australian resident were to lend money to an American firm, uh, that would be an example of an increase in foreign assets. Another example would be if an Australian investor were to buy a share in a Japanese firm um, and increase the ownership of that Japanese firm, uh, that would again be an example of an increase in foreign assets. Uh, the terminology that we use to describe this flow of funds out of Australia is Australian Investment Abroad or AIA. Uh, again, you can see uh, there are uh, you know, large differences between foreign liabilities and foreign assets. As foreign liabilities, as we've covered, represent uh, or are built up when money flows into Australia, while foreign assets are built up as money flows out of Australia. The key thing that I want to highlight is that foreign liabilities and foreign assets represent a stock or uh, an accumulated level of uh, liabilities or assets over time. So one way to demonstrate how this looks like is to look at this graph that you would be able to find in your textbook. So the black line represents foreign liabilities. So the label in the textbook is foreign investment in Australia. While that is true to some degree, um, it could be a bit confusing because we are uh, or we are interested in foreign liabilities, which is the total amount of foreign investment in Australia over time. So you can see that the amount of foreign liabilities has grown since 1991 and has grown significantly from around 75% uh, of GDP to almost 190% of GDP. So that's a large increase. The red line represents foreign assets. So it, this amount or stock represents the accumulation of Australian investment abroad over time. So in this case, uh, foreign uh, assets have increased from about 30% of GDP to around 130% of GDP in 2015. One thing you notice straight away is that the amount of foreign liabilities is above the amount of foreign assets. And that this corresponds to what we know about 
Australia's savings and investment gap. We know that the uh, the savings is or the national savings is not enough to sustain our high level of investment, and therefore we require uh, an inflow of foreign capital into Australia. And we can see that in the the fact that our foreign liabilities is larger than foreign assets um, as it stands at the moment. So one way that we can describe the overall uh, position that Australia is in when it comes to uh, investment flows or foreign investment flows is the Net International Investment Position or IIP. So the way that we calculate the IIP is by um, taking foreign liabilities um, on the left hand side and taking away foreign assets um, on the right hand side. So um, I put up an equation on the slide. So foreign liabilities minus foreign assets is equal to uh, the net international investment position. I've put down figures for June 2016, so you have uh, you know, recent and relevant information that you can use in any responses you might uh, write. And we can see that foreign liabilities uh, accumulated or accounted um, for $3.2 trillion uh, in total, while foreign assets uh, was $2.2 trillion in total. So if we use the IIP equation, we can see that if we take away 3.2 from 2, uh, if sorry, if we take away uh, 2.2 from 3.2, we are left with $1 trillion, which is Australia's net international investment position as of June 2016. One thing I want to highlight is that the net international investment position is uh, different from the balance of the capital and financial account. So we've mentioned this idea of foreign investment flows into and out of Australia. Um, and we know from the balance of payments chapter that those financial flows are recorded in the uh, capital and financial account. But one thing that you need to keep in mind is that when you talk about the capital and financial account, those refer to flows or changes in investment on a year-by-year -year basis, while this concept, the net international investment position, refers to the overall difference in foreign liabilities and assets uh, at one point in time, so rather than being a year-by-year -year change. Uh, so the final dot point or well, the final two points that I want to mention is that Australia's net IIP can also be referred to as a net foreign liability position because the amount of foreign liabilities uh, in Australia's case exceeds the amount of foreign assets. Um, so you can say that Australia's net foreign liability position is $1 trillion. That seems like a lot of money, um, and it is. But as we know, Australia has recorded... Uh, many current account deficits over the past decades and this has accumulated into a large net foreign liability position through repeated years of foreign inflows or foreign investment. So the important thing that you need to be able to identify is the link between foreign investment and the balance of payments. So this flowchart is in your textbook and uh, shows quite well the connection between foreign investment and the balance of payments. So we see that on the left hand side, foreign investment into Australia increases Australia's foreign liabilities. Um, you know that foreign investment flows are recorded in the financial account, uh, which is represented by that red square in the middle. Uh, at the same time, Australian investment abroad is also recorded in the financial account. Uh, but it is recorded as a debit because it is an outflow funds, while foreign investment into Australia is recorded as a credit, uh, which is a positive in the financial account. So that those flows would occur at the time of uh, investment flows. However, there are also subsequent flows linked to investment, uh, which are recorded in the current account. Uh, so for instance, flows that are related to investment in debt uh, are interest payments that occur maybe six months or a year after the initial uh, borrowing 
and lending of money. Uh, at the same time, of another, another example would be the uh, investment in shares. Um, there might be the initial investment in shares which is recorded in the financial account, but maybe uh, six months later or a year later, there is another uh, transaction in the current account, which is the payment of dividends. So these payments, so both the interest um, payment and the dividend payment are recorded in the current account under the income component. So I just wanted to go through one example of um, foreign investment flows so that you would be able to consolidate your knowledge of this idea. So I've drawn up a very weirdly shaped Australia and a globe which represents non-residents. Um, I've put down Australia's uh, net IIP position, so that should be IIP, not IPP. Yep. Uh, as of 2016, so foreign liabilities were $3.2 trillion, foreign assets were $2.2 trillion, and when you take uh, when you take the difference of the two, we are left with a net IIP of $1 trillion. And we, as we've mentioned before, we can describe this as a net foreign liability position. So, now we want to think about a case in 2017 where when particular investment flows occur. So let's say, for example, in 2017, Australia experiences an inflow of foreign investment. So foreign investment into Australia of, we'll say, 0.2 trillion dollars or uh, 200 billion dollars. At the same time, in this year, Australians invest um, in other countries. So Australian investment abroad will say uh, ends up being what 0.1 trillion dollars so you can see that you know there are two flows so f there are foreign investment flows into australia of 0.2 trillion dollars and australian investment abroad uh, of 0.1 trillion dollars so how does that impact the net iip so if we were to write down the foreign liabilities we know that foreign investment into Australia increases um, foreign liabilities. So the foreign liabilities line would end up being 3.4 because it's 3.2 plus 0.2. On the other hand, foreign assets would increase to 2.3 because 2.2 uh, is supplemented by the 0.1 of Australian investment abroad. So then what happens to the net IIP? This ends up being 0, sorry, 1.1. 1 .1. Okay, so this is an increase in the net IIP from 1 to 1 1.0, and that still is a net foreign liability position. One more thing I wanted to mention was how these two transactions, so the foreign investment into Australia and Australian investment abroad, interacts with the capital and financial account. So we know that investment um, into and out of Australia are recorded in the capital and financial account. So foreign investment into Australia is recorded as a credit. So therefore, this would correspond to a credit of 0.2 trillion, while Australian investment abroad would correspond to a debit of 0.1 trillion dollars. And that means the overall capital and financial account would record a surplus of plus 0.1 trillion, uh, which would therefore imply that the current account for this economy in 2017 
would be negative zero point one trillion.